Hi, I'm Marion. I'm Marion Trout. I uh, live in Blenheim and I'm an artist. I love painting flowers uh, and colour. I really love colour. I'm not a, not a beige person. Uh, I used to be a landscape gardener, but getting older, you can't always do that. So I've gone into painting and I'm bringing the colour of the gardens and putting it on canvas. I love bright colours, they make me feel good. Blue and yellows really stand out. They, the yellow is bright and warm and the blue is cool, um, but the colour is beautiful. It, against the yellow, they really stand out. And I hope they make other people feel good, but for me, a bright colour makes me happy. You, you see into a distance um, when you're in real life and you're in a garden and you need to have a three-dimensional garden when you're constructing one. You need to have height in different levels and also it recedes into the background which uh, and you've got to have some mystery into it too. So I like to put in my paintings what the, a big blaze of colour and then it recedes into the background and you're wondering what's behind that in the end. Uh, so you can go for a little walk in your mind. I uh, photograph a lot. I do a lot of photographing. I find painting outside is, the, the sun here tends to drown the colour when I'm painting outside. So I bring in the photos in and construct a uh, painting from all the photos I've taken and uh, draw it out on canvas and block in the colours and see if it works. I put a general wash on the background and then I use a palette knife and sometimes a sponge uh, to put in the main background colours. And then I get uh, my squirty bottles and I draw in the colours. Um, and the movement. Uh, it's, I find it a much simpler way of doing it. I also listen to music and I see colour when I listen to it and I think I really must put this down on canvas because it is so beautiful and no one else can see it except for me so why shouldn't other people be able to see it? So I do. I like music without voices, um, with a great deal of texture to it, uh, several different instruments and uh, a lot of highs and lows. Some of the instruments would have a very high um, pitch sound to them and others would have a very big bass to them and all these combined make a really wonderful meld of colours which are in my mind and I try and take a little photo snap of the best bit and put it down on canvas. This is uh, what I see when I listen to Eric Clapton music. Uh, this is Layla, um, a few chords of Layla and I can see the, the movement of the music and the different colours, the different temperatures of the music. Um, and the texture of the voice and the, the instruments that uh, all comes in and makes a huge, uh, well, just a moving picture. And uh, it's very difficult to concentrate on anything else when, you listen, when I'm listening to music because I've got all this going through my mind. I usually combine different techniques. I like to put um, texture in and some Sometimes I'll use a big, broad brush to put in big blocks of colour, but maybe that'll be for the background. Um, I'll dip the brush into several different colours at the same time and use that as a stroke, and it will give an interesting um, effect. And with acrylics, which I use, uh, if I don't like it, then I can always let it dry and paint over it. But the um, a broad brush or paint scrapers, 
Um, palette knives are great friends and um, I use uh, squirt bottles too, little oil bottles which I can mix my colour up, get it to the right texture and I can draw using um, the bottles just to gently squeeze the colour out as I'm drawing the colour and uh, I can put on other colours while it's still wet and the colours will colours will marble together and uh, it's uh, something you can never get with a paintbrush. Uh, the colours are still clear but they're mixed. I hate smeared colour, I really hate smeared colour. It just has to be clean and clear. I do paint with watercolour and I do use pastels uh, but majority of my paintings are acry acrylic. Um, I mean, watercolour's fun, but it's a very, very difficult medium because you've got to leave the light on the paper. If you've covered the whole paper in colour, you've got to start again because you left your light pieces out. I love to mix in some of the media. Yes, I like the, uh, the thickening media um, to give a different effect to the very liquid Sometimes I will use a very liquid medium on the background and it will uh, just gently blend the two colours together. They will run together. I'll tip the board and I'll use a hairdryer to move the colours around and then they'll set. And then on top of that, I can use um, some thick uh, palette knife work. We're using the uh, blended background just to hold it all together. And then I can use the squirt bottles to draw on top of that. I love bringing from the flat to some texture and colour, yes. I love the texture, I really do love the texture of gardens. Um, in, when, you're, when I'm gardening and planting a new garden I have to keep in mind that all the leaves and the trunks of the trees have different textures and to contrast them together um, you will make a beautiful picture if you have very similar textures and leaves and trunks then you get a fairly boring landscape and I love to have a painting with texture too. Zealand colours are very clean and brash and clear. Um, the colours on the continent were all very muted and soft. Even the sky was a, a softer blue compared to New Zealand. Uh, I will be doing some paintings from there, but I think I'll come back to the New Zealand colours because I really do love the clarity of them. And I express myself far better in a painting than I do when I speak. Uh, so I'm a doer, not a, not a talker. And if I could talk, I probably wouldn't paint. It's just the enjoyment of colour and wanting to share it with other people. Um, yeah, the shapes are, the shapes actually don't matter. It's actually the effect of the whole painting. You have the darks and the lights and the shapes are, they appear out of the darks and lights rather than being put straight in. Uh, not actual shapes as in a triangle. Yeah. They are brought out by the background and then the colour is secondary to the shape, but very, very important because it makes it live. I've mixed um, ones that I use frequently when I'm painting. Uh, they are ones I mix, some I mix thick and some I mix thin. And the ones that I mixed on the thinner side go in these oil bottles which I used for drawing when I'm painting. Yes, this piece I've blocked in the colour with a sponge and then I've used a palette knife and I have painted using the squirt bottles the background and I just draw in the colours, she says, trying to get it unblocked. And on the colour, I can use it thick or I can put thin depending on how I feel. Okay. I'll put shadows on the trees where I want. And put 
thick. I want. Or I could put very thin dotted lines, depending on where it is in the painting. Average time, I'd probably say about 10 days. I start off with a general idea and then I'll put it down on the painting, on, on the, just draw it out and see if it looks good on the board. If it doesn't look good, I'll have to do another drawing. Um, but usually it seems to work and uh, then I go straight into it. I put the background in, I put a layer of gesso, then I'll put a drawing on that, then I'll put a background colour and usually fairly thin uh, with a broad brush. Then I will come in and palette knife some of the broader areas of colour um, on, the, on, the, on the bottom. Put the, the uh, just in outline and then put the colour in. Paler colours into the background. I'll start to, to get the depth then I'll start using a, a creamy yellow. It's a much paler, softer yellow and I'll start putting that into the... Uh, I like experimenting. <laughs> try new techniques, try using different colours, different media. Um, all adds a bit of uh, variety, otherwise you're just churning it out. The same old, same old and I don't want to do that. <laughs>